a very good evening to one and all. I hope my audio is clear to everyone. So well, uh, for today's session, I would like to discuss on the topic entitled Five Powerful Techniques, Especially Statistics for Scientific Research. So before moving on to the session, let me introduce about myself. I'm Dr. Aishwarya Vedgiri, working as a senior research associate in Aristocrat Research Solutions. So if you want to know about us, uh, if you want to reach us, you can uh, use the following website link. And if you want to uh, make a call to us, you can uh, contact us through the number provided in the slide. So this is the uh, website uh, address and uh, number through which you can contact us. So here in Aristocrat, uh, we are providing certain services like research guidance and internship programs. So under research guidance, uh, like we are providing uh, scientific writing assistance. Uh, we are giving uh, scientific research implementation or data analysis. Further, we are also providing scientific publication support in reputed journals. So if you want to know about uh, research guidance, you can uh, use the following uh, URL. Uh, for internship program, it is a kind of intensive internship program where uh, we'll be providing certificates which will be valid throughout India. Apart from that, uh, like uh, this certificate will be provided for the aspirants who have completed 75 days of internship program. And further, like resume building and job interview assistance will be assured along with the completion certificate. So to know about the internship programs, you can uh, use the URL provided in the slide. So these are the two services that we are providing in our Aristocrat Research Solutions. So well, let's get started with the session. So uh, first, uh, let us see about the purpose and use of SPSS. So this uh, software, the SPSS software, was originally called as statistical package for the social sciences. But later, reflecting the original market, uh, the name was uh, changed to statistical product and service solutions. So this SPSS software has got a long heritage uh, when it comes to history. So this uh, SPSS software was initially introduced in the year 1968, which was originally developed to facilitate the statistical analysis in the social sciences. So the earlier versions were designed in such a way it can be uh, used in a mainframe computers. So later, this software was purchased by IBM in the year 2009 for more than $1 billion. So after which, as of uh, January 2010, it became SPSS and IBM company. So the complete transfer of business to IBM was done during the month of October 2010. So from that date, this SPSS uh, was called as SPSS and IBM company, which ceased to exist. So uh, this uh, IBM SPSS is now fully integrated into the IBM corporation and is now one of the brands under IBM software groups. So uh, in, let us see about the general capabilities of this software. So there are two uh, essential capabilities. The first one is this SPSS software can import data from many different sources such as Microsoft Excel and SAS. This SAS is nothing but it is a statistical software suit which is developed by SAS Institute for Data Management. Uh, the second uh, important essential thing is it provides analytical tools to generate reports, charts, plots, descriptive statistics, and also runs advanced statistical analysis. So these are the two essential capabilities that has been provided by the SPSS software. So uh, in this session, we'll be seeing the following five agendas. So uh, let me uh, tell about the agendas that are going to be carried out throughout the session. So the first one is uh, SPSS environment and data entry. The second one is about the process of entering your questionnaire, 
data and analyzing the data properly. The third one is setting up of variables and entering the data into the SPSS sheet. The fourth one is about procedures to analyze the data in SPSS. And the fifth one is about exploring the SPSS output and interpreting the significant level of the data. So we'll be covering all these five agendas in this session. So well, let's move on to the session. So the first one is about the data entry. So uh, when it comes to data entry, so initially you will be opening the software. So this uh, this is a screenshot of the software version 20. So where when you open a software, uh, the dialog box appears uh, in this way. So here, like if you have any existing data source, so you can just uh, click on the existing data source. Uh, you can click the option and under more files, you'll be uh, getting all your option, uh, like all your uh, SAV files, that is the SPSS files. So through that, you can just uh, like uh, click the select the file and you can open the already existing data. Or else if you want to uh, go for a new uh, 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 file, you just can type in data and you can select and open the file. So if you uh, select the existing data, all your en entered details will be appearing in the data sheet. So if you want to uh, open a new uh, file, like you don't have a data sheet, you can just go uh, select the option called as type in data and just click on the OK button. So you'll, uh, you can enter the data sheet in a fresh way. So uh, when you click uh, a new data sheet, so these are the two essential views that will be uh, required for the SPSS sheet. So one is the data view and another one is the variable view. So as the name indicates, so under data view, you will be entering the data and under variable view, you will be entering the details about the data. So initially you will be brought up in the screen, in the screen one data view. So where uh, like uh, initially we have to provide all the details about the variable and only after entering the detail, we can move on to the data view. So initially we have to select the, so you, you can see the two options uh, below. So we have to select the variable view and under variable view, we have to provide the details about the variables. So whatever like age, gender, and all your other variables, you have to just provide uh, the names and uh, the corresponding details in this sheet. So once you have entered the details in the variable view, this will get transferred to the data view. So you can see the uh, top uh, column where you can see under uh, variable view, you have name, type, width, decimals. So all these essential, whatever the essential things needs to be filled, should be filled in this uh, variable view. After which, once you have provided the names in the variable view, all these names will be entered in the data view. So this data view right now, like you can see, it is just uh, shown as VAR, which is nothing but variable. So one, only if you enter the name and the name column, uh, the name will be changed here. So accordingly, uh, whatever details you are providing in the variable view, it will get transferred to the data view. So this is, these are the two essential views that are present in the SPSS software. So uh, let us uh, see about how uh, like questionnaire data into numerical format. So we will see how the questionnaire data has to be converted to the numerical format. So generally uh, we will uh, go for a. So uh, you can see here this is a sample uh, questionnaire sample. So generally we will be having a questionnaire sample uh, where we will be getting a raw data. Say for example here I have uh, taken three different sections. Uh, you can see in the first section, it is like a Likert scale, five Likert scale uh, questionnaire. So where uh, like you will be giving to the respondents and uh, he or she will be filling uh, by using tick marks or just uh, uh, denoting with some, uh, indicating with some uh, marks. So after which you will be converting the data in the Excel sheet. So here uh, like you will be converting as strongly agree, disagree, neutral, agree or strongly agree. So uh, this will be your raw data. So initially we have to convert the raw data into numerical format. Only then we can input the data in the SPSS sheet. So we'll see how the data has to be converted from a raw data to a numerical format. So here I have uh, taken a sample of three different sections, where it is about uh, the section A is about online shopping drivers. The section B is about online shopping barriers. And the section C is about the demographic profiles. 
So here uh, you can see under online shopping drivers, I have got four different variables. So, and uh, under drive, uh, I mean under barriers, again I have got four different uh, variables. And under uh, demographic profile, I have got three different variables. One is about age. Uh, the second one is about the gender. The third one is about the income. So using this sample, we'll see how we have to enter the data in the SPSS sheet. So you can see. So I have made a, a rough uh, example. So where like uh, for uh, drivers, online shopping drivers, I have uh, produced the raw data. So here you can see like I have uh, entered as strongly. So you will be entering your raw data in this way, right? So in Excel sheet, you will be entering a the raw data of all the response. So uh, here, after entering the raw data, you have to assign values. So only then you can convert the raw data into the numerical format. So for that, uh, uh, you can see here, I have uh, assigned a value for strongly disagree, I have given a value as one. So for disagree, I have given a value as two. For neutral, I have given a value as three. And similarly for uh, agree, I have given the value as and for strongly agree, I have given the value as five. So likewise, so this uh, will be uh, helpful in converting the raw data into the numerical format. So here I have uh, assigned all the va values for all the uh, uh, like all the response for which I have uh, assigned all the uh, different uh, values. So we, uh, after uh, making the uh, value part ready, we have to convert the raw data into the uh, numerical format. So once I have assigned the values for all the uh, responses, I have uh, entered the uh, like I have entered the data in the numerical format. So you can see here. So for uh, strongly disagree, I have given the value as one. So disagree two, neutral three, agree four, and for strongly agree five. So likewise, you have convert the raw data into the numerical format. So only then we can enter the values in the data sheet. So likewise, uh, we have to uh, also provide the values for other uh, demographic profiles. So where uh, you can see like uh, for gender, I have uh, like we generally have male and female. So where uh, we'll be uh, providing the values. So uh, it can be any of the values like but whatever uh, like value you are providing for the uh, name, you have to follow the same number format in the numerical format. So like when we are providing the numerical data, we have to follow the same numbers that we are going to assign for the that particular name. So for here, like uh, in, gen in case of gender, for male, I have uh, given the value as one. For female, I have given the value as two. So it is not like we have to provide like one and two, but whatever, uh, like it can be either for female, it can be one and for male, it can be two. So whatever values you are assigning, it should follow the same with the raw data. So here uh, I have uh, accordingly I have entered the values for male one and female two. So likewise for age, you can see here it is like uh, I have got three different uh, uh, age groups. So accordingly I have assigned as one, two, and three. So likewise we have to follow the same pattern in the numerical format. And similarly for the in, uh, monthly income, uh, I have got uh, four different uh, uh, ranges of income. So where I have given one, two, three, and four. So likewise, we have to enter the same numerical values here. So once you have prepared with the numerical data, we can enter the details in the data sheet. So this is one essential part only after which we can uh, go for the SPSS software. So you can see like for all the variables I have entered. So likewise, uh, uh, here I have given a sample for drivers. Likewise for uh, barriers, I have to make the same data uh, entry. And uh, for demographic profile, I have made the numerical format. So once the numerical format is over, we can move on to the setting up of variables. So uh, before like moving on to the SPSS sheet, we have to do uh, like we have to convert the uh, raw data into the numerical format. Only then we can uh, like create the data sheet for which we can do the analysis part. So uh, we'll see how, how to set up a variable view. So as I told, like there are two different uh, views in SPSS. One is a variable view and another one is data view. So this variable view is one essential part where we have to properly enter the details about the uh, variables. Because once uh, like uh, this has to be taken so much care because if we are going to uh, provide any 
uh, wrong values or if you are going to miss any section uh, any essential column this will uh, lead you to the improper output so uh, obviously the output will not be correct it will be obviously incorrect so we have to take so much care in providing proper information in the variable view only then whatever data we are going to analyze will give you a proper and correct output so here you can see we have got different uh, columns so uh, all the essential columns needs to be properly taken care of so uh, here like uh, uh, we will see what are the different columns are available in variable view one is name another one is type but decimals label values missing column align measure and row so uh, out of this whatever essential things uh, we need to fill up should be properly filled we'll see what are the essential columns that has to be taken care of so the first one is about the name column so here you can see i have uh, provided all the uh, like uh, variable names i have used in the questionnaire uh, like it is uh, the order can be according to your convenience but we have to enter all the uh, names one in a single word format uh this is because we can't leave any spaces in between words so it should be in single word format in case of name column but uh, if we want for our uh, understanding if we want to use uh, like you, you can see here i have i have used two different words uh, if you want to use two different words we can't use space in name column so instead we can use underscore for our convenience for our uh, understanding purpose we can use uh, like underscores to indicate the space but here we can't use any space in between uh, the words so uh, so if you want uh, like say for example for gender i want uh, uh, my output to show as gender of the respondents for that uh, like we have to use the label section will i will discuss about the label section in the preceding slides so uh, here we can't use any uh, spaces instead if you want to use any spaces we can use the underscore uh, underscores to denote the wordings so here like i have uh, provided all the variables like gender age monthly income and uh, as uh, i have selected two different uh, uh, like uh, sections one is drivers and barriers so under drivers i have got four different variables i have indicated in short form as osd1 because online shopping drivers one two three and four and similarly for online shopping barriers i have used a uh, abbreviation as osb1 2 3 and 4 so likewise i have entered my uh, variable names in the name column so once uh, after entering the name we have to move on to the type column so here uh, in type this is uh, nothing but generally it has to be in numeric format only then you can uh, provide the numeric data only the numeric data will be uh, accessed by the software so here you can see i have uh, used uh, the word as string so this uh, string is nothing but if we say for example uh, here uh, i'm not going to provide any uh, uh, numerical format R rather i have got some alphabetic uh, id numbers of the respondents so where i'll be providing the id numbers in this column so for that i have to select string so only if i select string uh, we can uh, provide the uh, characters in the particular section otherwise like uh, we can't enter any characters in the uh particular section so uh, uh, for that uh, if i want to use any characters in the particular section i have to convert the type as string otherwise everything should be in numeric format so only the numeric data will be accessed by the sps software so accordingly you can select the type in the type column so once you have selected the type we have to move on to the decimals so where uh, you can see i have uh, provided the decimals as zero here in my case like my uh, numerical format has got only single digits it doesn't have any uh, decimal values so if if it doesn't have any decimal values we have to uh, provide the column as uh, zero uh, say for example you can see here i have uh, provided the decimals and values so if you are going to uh, Uh, like uh, provide the value as one in decimal column. You'll be entering your value. If your value is like one point one, you have a, a decimal value. You can use the. Uh, you can accordingly you can provide the values in the decimal column. So if uh, your value has got one point one one, then you have to provide uh, two in the decimal column. So likewise, 
So initially, when you are uh, opening a new file, this will be uh, having two uh, in the decimal column. So we have to change it to zero or whatever uh, the essential thing you have to change. You have to change the values accordingly. So in my case, uh, all the uh, numerical format is in a single digit way. So I have and give, uh, provided the value as zero in all the columns. So once uh, the decimal uh, column is made, we have to move on to the label column. So here, as I told, so uh, we can't provide uh, like, uh, say, for example, uh, I, after analyzing, I'll be getting the output table, right? So uh, in that output table, uh, if I'm not going to provide any details in the label section, what happens is uh, I have provided the name here as uh, monthly underscore income. So my output table will have monthly underscore income. The label will be shown as monthly underscore income, but I don't want in that way. I, I wanted it into, uh, to be in a correct format. So for that, we have to properly label here. So if we have labeled uh, each variable, then only the labeled names will be provided in the output table. So this will reduce your job. Otherwise, like you have to edit all the names after uh, getting the output. So this will uh, save your time. So you have to properly label each variable accordingly. This will be shown in the output table. Otherwise, like uh, the output table for me, uh, like I'll be getting the variable as OSD1, OSD2, OSD3, and OSD4. I won't be getting the names of the variables. Instead, I'll be getting the abbreviations. So I want, it, I want the table. I don't want to go for a double work. So I want uh, my table output should be in a correct format. So uh, in, for that, I have to properly lab, or label all the variables in the label section. So once you have properly labeled it, in the output table, you will be getting all the names which you have provided. So accordingly, for uh, drivers, I have provided the names. And for barriers, I have provided the uh, corresponding names. So once the labeling section is over, we can move on to the values. So this is one very essential column uh, when it comes to variable view because only if you provide proper value to the labels, your output, uh, what you're getting will be correct. Otherwise, it will uh, give you a mismatched data which will be totally incorrect. So this section is one of the essential section when it comes to variable view. So uh, though we are, uh, you are not filling up the other parts, this has to be taken very much care. Only then the values which you are providing will be properly assessed. So here we can see how to enter the, uh, assign the values for each variables. So here you can see uh, for gender, as I told, like I have got two different genders, like male and female. So for which I have assigned value as one and two. So for, uh, for entering that values, when you select the uh, option here, like when you, uh, when you select the option uh, under variables, you'll get the, you'll be getting a uh, like dialog box in this way. So where uh, you can enter the value and you can label the uh, value. So once you have labeled it, you can add that particular value to the variable. So here you can see, uh, say for example, for male, I have assigned the value as one. So I have to provide the value as one in the value uh, column. I'm, I'm in the value section and uh, for that particular value what I have labeled is male. So I have to provide the uh, name as male in the label section. So once I have given provided the details I have to click the uh, you can see there are three different uh, uh, options here. So one is add change and remove. So once entering the value and uh, label I have to click add so that it gets added in the uh, dialog box here. So if I, I have made some mistakes, say for example, instead of male, I have typed as mole, M-O-L-E. So I want to change, make corrections to the word or the value. I can go for, I can I have to select the uh, particular uh, uh, well, like a label which I wanted to uh, make corrections. I have to uh, say, for example, like here, I want to make this uh, corrections. So I have to select that particular word and I have to click on change. So it appears on top of the, uh, section so here it will be appearing where I have to change the mole as male again and I have to give the option as change and similarly uh, we can if I don't want like I, I in my uh, study I have got only the male respondents I don't have a female respondent I can just remove this value so uh, to remove this I have to just select the option and I have to just click on remove button so I, I have to just uh, click on this remove so that it gets removed 
so uh, likewise you can add change or remove the values in the value label uh, i mean value label dialog box so likewise we have to enter the values for all the variables that we are providing uh, only then the uh, output will be assessed in the correct way otherwise like it will be just like a mean value or a average value because uh, we are not providing any label like we are not providing any values for the like we are not providing any labels for the values so uh, in uh, in that case it will be assessed on as a whole as a number but it won't be assessed in a individual a way like say for example in case of uh, age it won't be assessed in the in case uh, in way of uh, 30 to 40 41 to 50 or above 50 instead it will be we will be providing the values alone so what happens is it will just uh, as a whole uh, as a value it will be assessing uh, uh, your output i mean it will be assessing your data and it will provide you an output which will be totally incorrect so for that we have to properly label the uh, like uh, whatever numerical data you are providing, if you have to label it, you have to label it in the value section. So likewise, here you can see for uh, gender, age, and monthly income I have labeled. And for other uh, uh, like variables for drivers and barriers, I have got a five Likert scale method. So where I have provided the value, same values for all the uh, driver, uh, variables of drivers and barriers. So here, say as I have provided like for strongly disagree, I have given the value as one, disagree two, neutral three, agree four, and strongly agree as three. I mean, sorry, five. So likewise, you have to properly label the value section. Only then you will be getting a correct output. So once this uh, section is over, now another essential thing is your uh, measures. So uh, this is one essential, uh, again, this is one of the essential part that plays a major role in uh, variable view, where we have to properly uh, select the measures uh, section, only then you can get a proper output. So say, for example, uh, like we have got three different options in measures. One will be scale, another one is nominal, and another, uh, the third one is the ordinal. So this scale is nothing but it is a non-grouped one. Uh, whereas nominal is an unranked categories and uh, ordinal is the ranked categories. So here I have selected the, so which are not grouped. So that comes under the scale. So here uh, I have not, I'm not going to group uh, uh, the age, gender, age, and monthly income. So I have uh, selected all those variables under the non group category. Whereas uh, the nominal, which is called as unranked categories, it can be either the, the sample numbers or the serial numbers or it can be the IDs. So all those comes in that are nominal, which is not going to be under any uh, ranking conditions. Uh, whereas the ordinal is the one which uh, is used for the ranked categories. There is, say, for example, satisfaction level, level of agreement. So here I have got a Likert scale uh, method. So where I have uh, used the ordinal for all the drivers and barriers. So uh, also this plays an essential role because uh, according to the measure you are selecting, the analysis will take place. So we have to, uh, uh, three, three, uh, there are three essential things that has to be taken care of. One is your labeling section. Another one is the value, which is the most essential part. And the third one is your measures. So these three things should be taken care of. Only then you'll be getting a proper output. So this is about the variable view. Only after entering all the uh, details about the variables in the variable view, we can enter the data in the data view. So we have finished up entering the details about our variables in the variable view. So we'll see how to enter the data in the data view. So procedures to analyze the data in SPSS. So uh, you can see, so we have provided all the details in the variable view. So uh, like you can see here, uh, it, uh, like after and uh, initially I showed you the dialog box of the data view where it was shown as uh, VAR. So which is nothing but called as uh, variable. So initially there was no names. So here you can see like this was been there for entire section. So uh, initially we didn't provide any uh, details of the variables. So once we have entered the name uh, in the variable view, all the for all the names which we have provided in the variable view it will be displayed on top of the data view so here you can see uh, say for example you can see here so i have entered the, all these names will be shown in the data view you can see here 
like gender, age, monthly income, online shopping drivers. So under uh, which I have got four different variables. And again, online shopping barriers. And again, I have got four different variables. So all these, once you have entered uh, uh, the names in the name section, all the names which you have provided will be displayed on top of the data view. So uh, under each uh, uh, like names, like you have to provide the corresponding data. So you can see like uh, we have already made the numerical format. Uh, so I have to and just uh, if you are converting the uh, like numerical format in an Excel sheet, you can just copy and paste it uh, all the uh, data here or else you can directly enter in the data sheet. So either you can convert the uh, questionnaire data into numerical format in an uh, Excel sheet uh, and you can just copy and paste it here or you can directly convert the raw data into numerical format in the data view. So either way we can just uh, enter the data in the data view. So here you can see like under gender I have uh, provided like uh, here uh, I have just given a sample of 10 response. So where I have entered the values as uh, we have assigned the values I have accordingly uh, like entered the values in the in each of the section. So here uh, uh, this column is left empty because I as I told like I, I uh, wanted to use some kind of uh, like client IDs uh, or uh, 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 like uh, the respondents IDs so uh, I can use those IDs here so if you want like uh, if you want to uh, like say for example uh, my ID is going to be uh, CA12 so if I have uh, got an uh, like uh, alphabetic uh, uh, presence in the ID so uh, if I have got an alphabetic presence in my ID I can't include uh, those alphabets in this column because I have given the type as numeric format so here uh, in this column I have given the type as uh, string format so only if we select the type as string format we can uh, enter the numerical character I mean sorry the alphabetical characters so if not we can only enter the numerical values here so here I can now enter uh, any new uh, alphabetical characters so if you want we can enter the uh, respondents ID or uh, whatever uh, we uh, want to include so in this way we have to enter the data in the data view so after which uh, comes the essential part that is the analysis so here for analyzing you can uh, uh, like once after complete uh, completing the entry of the uh, uh, sorry of your data in the data view you have to uh, like you can see the the option as analyze on top of the uh, section so where under which you yeah, uh, can uh, have different analysis uh, things like different analytical uh, procedures so say for example uh, uh, here you can see descriptive statistics under which we will be uh, uh, getting the frequencies Say for example for uh, demographic profiles generally we will go for frequencies uh, gender age and monthly uh, income will be uh, checking the frequency uh, that is the percentage so uh, that can be assessed using the option called as descriptive statistics and of which we'll be having the frequency uh, analysis so likewise there are different analysis uh, where a compare means under which you will be uh, getting all the one way ANOVA means and all those things Likewise, I uh, have the correlation studies where uh, I can uh, use the cor uh, uh, correlation uh, analysis and then regression linear. Uh, so under which you will be having the options of uh, linear regression, multiple regression, so all those things. Uh, then uh, you have the uh, dimension reduction scale. Uh, so under scale, you will be uh, having the reliability test. So uh, for checking the reliability of your questionnaire, we use the reliability analysis where it is present in the, the scale option. Then non-parametric test where uh, we have a man with knees test, all those things. Uh, and then uh, we also have the ROC curve. Uh, so uh, it is nothing but the receiver operating characteristic curve. So which is a graphical plot that illustrates the diagnostic ability of a binary classifier system as its discrimination threshold uh, like threshold is verified. So we use the ROC curve for that. So apart from that, uh, if we have the AMO software, we can just uh, uh, directly click on this IBM uh, SPSS AMO software so that this data will be directly imported in the AMO software. So all these uh, analysis can be carried out using the analysis option. So whatever analysis is needed, we can just select the analyze button and under which we can select the 
corresponding uh, analysis that we require. So here uh, I'll show you an example of uh, the frequencies. So as I told, under descriptive statistics, we'll be having the frequencies. So apart from that, we also have uh, descriptives explore. So under under explore, uh, like it, uh, if we uh, select the explore, it will provide all the other uh, uh, values like the mean values. We are uh, Distrib mean uh, distribution and then uh, also it will provide the skewness and kurtosis. So all these things will be uh, obtained from the explore option. So and after uh, apart from that, the cross tabs like it, uh, the cross tabs between each variables, uh, which gives you the chi square value, then ratios and pp plots and qq plots. So all these things are present under the descriptive statistics. So we'll see the frequencies how uh, we can do the frequencies. So here like um, uh, once you select the frequencies option, we'll get this dialog box. So where we have to select the uh, corresponding variables that has to be uh, analyzed for the frequencies. So here for frequency, I need uh, uh, like gender, age, and monthly income. So I have selected all those three, and I have to just click on this arrow so that it will get entered in the variable section. So once uh, and, uh, like you will be having different options here. So charts, if you want any plots, we can have, we can select from the charts option and uh, statistics. We can get uh, different statistics like uh, whatever. If we want uh, the st standard deviation, we can select all those options in the statistic uh, section. So once uh, you can see here, so once everything is selected. So I have transferred to the variable section. So once after selecting this and all the corresponding options, I have to just click on the OK. So that I'll be getting this output sheet. So this is the output uh, sheet where um, you can see like uh, this, uh, these are the frequency table. So uh, like uh, say, for example, you will be getting uh, what are the valid uh, uh, values and missing values. Uh, if I have left any values in between or if I have uh, provided uh, the value which is not uh, labeled, it will be shown under the missing uh, section. So here I have not, uh, I don't have any missing uh, column. So uh, I have all the response are valid. And accordingly, the output I have received. So here you can see like gender, age, and monthly income. So accordingly, the percentage of distribution will be shown here. So this is the output sheet uh, for the frequencies. The output sheet will be looking in this way. So next, I uh, will see uh, like uh, the exploring and interpreting the SPSS output. So how to explore and interpret the SPSS output. So uh, so uh, as I told, like you have uh, obtained the uh, output sheet. So for uh, like we need this output sheet in a document form. So or uh, we have to save this in the. Uh, like SPSS format, it's uh, like SPSS output format itself means you have to just select on the save as option. So after which, uh, like you can see, uh, it can be saved in .spv format, which is the SPSS output uh, file. So we can just save it in this uh, format so that uh, if you open, it will just open in the output uh, way. Or else uh, we can also uh, convert the uh, like all the outputs in the document format. Uh, so directly it will it can be saved in uh, uh, word document so where we have to select the type as dot uh, doc format and uh, we can just uh, so it, it, like for this uh, to convert it in the word format we have to uh, select the option as export so if we are going to export it like it will ask you the types so if i want to convert it into the document format i have to just select the dot doc uh, format and uh, after which i have to just click on ok so i can select the option uh, like browse the file wherever we want to save the result we can just browse and save it and this is the way we can uh, export the uh, output format in the word document so once i have exported the uh, uh, like output for i mean output file uh, I want to save the entire data sheet. So because this data sheet we have uh, created can be used uh, in the later times for any other analysis purpose. So uh, for that, we have to save the data sheet. So to save the data sheet, we can save it in the .sav format where we can save it and uh, later we can use the file uh, for other analytical purposes. 
So we have to save it as dot uh, sav uh, format so that it can be opened. Uh, like uh, as I told initially, like we can open the existing data sheet. So this can be saved, and we can now open the existing data sheet and in which we can make the corrections or analysis. So here uh, I'll show you an example like uh, how to interpret a result. Uh, in my case, like I have got uh, uh, drivers and barriers. So for which uh, I have selected the one sample t test. So uh, under as I told, like under compare uh, means uh, we have means one sample t test, uh, independent sample t test, pad sample t test, and one day on over. So uh, whatever analysis we want to perform, we can just in, in the same way we have to just select the option and uh, select the corresponding analysis that has to be carried out, and we have to just uh, so. Uh, whatever uh, analysis we are going to select, it will show you a dialog box like this. So we have to first select the variables that has to be uh, analyzed. So here, like I want to analyze the uh, like drivers, so online shopping drivers. So I have selected all the online shopping drivers and I have just included in the uh, test variable section. So only the variables that I'm going to select will be uh, analyzed. So once selecting, I can uh, pro uh, like uh, test whatever. Uh, Corresponding options I need, and after testing it, I'm mean, after selecting it, I have to just click OK. So similar way, we can perform for other analysis. So once I have given the uh, click the OK button, I will get the output sheet. So here you can see I have given the one sample t test. So for which I have since my value is same uh, here, the t uh, values are same. Uh, so according to your uh, values, you will be getting the t values and. Uh, uh, DF uh, degree of freedom and the significance level. So here you can see. Uh, so uh, for uh, so for most of the studies, like we we used to have the hypothesis, like uh, we'll be having the null hypothesis and the alternate hypothesis. So when it comes to questionnaire method, generally there will be null hypothesis and alternate hypothesis. So where uh, your alternate, uh, I mean your null hypothesis will be like uh, it doesn't have uh, any uh, significant effect. Whereas your uh, alternate hypothesis will be uh, having like it has some uh, significant effect. So like uh, to know about the significance level, uh, we have uh, like uh, we have to confirm it using the p values. So p value is nothing but the significance. Here you can see significance to tail uh, values. So this is the p value column. Where a p value is used in hypothesis testing in order to help you uh, like in order to help you support or reject the Null hypothesis. So the p value will be the evidence against a null hypothesis. So the smaller the p value, the stronger the evidence. Whereas, uh, like you can reject the null hypothesis. So here you can see like 0 0.000, which is like uh, less than 0 0.05. So uh, like uh, uh, the significance level is like 0 0.05. So if your uh, significance value is going to be less than 0 0.05. Uh, it means like uh, your result has got significant effect on so and so. So, uh, uh, like uh, which infers that uh, your null hypothesis will be rejected. So, if your uh, significance level is going to be above 0 0.05, which means like uh, your particular result does not show any uh, significant effect with so and so. So, which means like uh, you will be accepting the null hy uh, hypothesis and you will be rejecting the alternate hypothesis. So uh, uh, using the p value, we'll be finding out the significance level of your study. So uh, with this uh, p value, you can just uh, analyze whether your null hypothesis is accepted or rejected. So this way, like you can uh, do for uh, all other analysis. Similarly, for even one way or another, we will be having the significance level. So likewise, we can follow the same uh, pattern in uh, most of the analysis. So uh, uh, let me end the session. So I'll just like to I would like to uh, tell about the services uh, provided by our uh, aristocrat research solutions, where uh, we are providing uh, two different uh, uh, like courses. Like one is the research guidance, and another one is internship program. So under research guidance, uh, we are providing scientific writing assistance. Scientific research implementation or data analysis, and we are also providing scientific publication support in reputed journals. So, for to know about the research guidance, you can go through the URL provided in the slide. Uh, 
whereas we are also offering internship programs where it is a kind of intensive internship program so where for which we are providing certificates which is valid throughout the india and certificates will be provided only for aspirants who have completed about 75 days of internship program uh, further we are also providing a resume building and job interview assistance uh, show, which will be assured along with the completion certificate so for to know about the internship program you can use the following url so you can get to know about us using these uh, links so if you want to reach us you can just reach us at uh, phd at aristocratresearch.com uh, or else you can visit the website link provided www.aristocratresearch.com uh, if you want to uh, contact us you can use the following uh, number provided in the slide so i thank everyone for patiently listening thank you all